Yahweh All praises, honor, and glory due to Yahweh Shem El Shai. Double honors to the elders and apostles of the Great Millstone. Peace and blessings to you like to Israel. Shalom. All right. This lesson is just going to be going into um how we are to humble ourselves, man. All right. We need to humble ourselves. Speaking to myself first and foremost, of course, you know, but this message really applies to everybody, man. All right. Because it doesn't hurt to walk with humility. OK, because honestly, besides the fact that, that we're in this ministry and that Yahweh Shem El Shai has had mercy on us thus far. You know, we have nothing to be proud about, man. OK, we have nothing to be proud about. Because even our righteousness is as filthy rags, you know. So we have really nothing to boast in, save the fact that Yahweh Bashem Al Shai having mercy upon us and showing us his word, man. All right. And giving us the gift of faith, man. All right. Because this is a gift. This isn't this isn't by our glory. All right. Let me see. Let me see if I can get this scripture real quick. Call him like Yahweh Bashem Shai. But actually, let me read this first. This is Sirach or Ecclesiastes 10 and verse 9. Why is earth and ashes proud? There is not a more wicked thing than a covetous man. For such a one setteth his own soul to sail, because while he liveth, he casteth away his bowels. All right. So basically, the point that I wanted to get was why is earth and ashes proud? We're nothing but earth and ashes, man. We're worms. The Lord likens us unto a worm, you know, so we're feeble, man. All right. No matter how many pounds you can bench or squat, you know, at the end of the day, we're still feeble. All right. We're just mortal men as far as right now. All right. We're gods falling from our first estate, man. OK, so we need to be walking with humility. OK, this is Sirach or Ecclesiastes 10 and 12. The beginning of pride is when one departeth from his power and his heart is turned away from his maker. For pride is the beginning of sin, and he that hath it shall pour out abomination. And therefore the Lord brought upon them strange calamities and overthrew them utterly. All right. And the scriptures say what? He said they're going to pour out abomination, right? Well, this is Sirach or Ecclesiastes 15 and 13. The Lord hateth all abomination. And they that fear Yahweh Shem El Shai love it not. All right. So the point being, the Lord hates pride. Okay. The Lord hates pride. And that's another scripture going to show you that God, so-called God, hates. All right. This is Proverbs 6 and verse 15 or 16. It says, These six things doth the Lord hate. Yeah, seven are an abomination unto him. The first thing on the list, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that divideth wicked imaginations, Feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that sowed discord among the brethren. All right. And, you know, it's crazy because a lot of times discord among the brethren is done through pride. OK, because that's, that's why the scriptures say, let nothing be done through strife and what? Vain glory. OK. This is Philippians two and three. Let nothing be done through strife and vain glory. It's like your strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem each other. Let's each esteem other better than themselves. So lowliness of mind is going into humility. Okay. So that's the point on there right there. You know, a lot of discord being sown amongst the brethren is done through strife and vain glory. And that's really from the essence of pride. That's why it says, but let in lowliness of mind, meaning in humility and humbleness, let each esteem other better than themselves, man. Right. Because we have to be looking towards the, the welfare and the well-being of the brotherhood before ourselves. OK, you know, not. Oh, it's all about me. That's prideful, too. OK. And as well. This truth has been given to us as a gift. So save this truth. We have really nothing to glory of, man. All right. This is uh, Ephesians 2 and 8. It says, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. Right. So we have nothing to boast about. Oh, I did this on my own. You know, I'm in this truth because of me. I learned this truth. By my no, man. All right. The Lord is the one who has given you this truth. OK. It says, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of Yahweh by Shemel Shai. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Yeah, we didn't work up anything to deserve this. You know, the Lord just decided to give it to us as a gift, man. All right. 
not of works, lest any man should boast. All right, so that's the point of that right here. For we are his worksmanship, created in Mashiach Yahweh unto good works, which the Most High hath before ordained that we should walk in them. All right, right. So basically, we're the Lord's workmanship. You know, this we're the Lord's project, if you will. You know, the Lord didn't have to wake us up to this truth. You know what I'm saying? The Lord didn't have to have mercy on us, but he did. You know, so that's why it's best to be humble, man. All right, remain humble. Take a humility, a humble approach. You know, because this is all the will of the Lord. This is not of ourselves. It's Jeremiah 9 and 23 that says, The Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, neither let the mighty man glory in his might, let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth, for in these things I delight, saith the Lord. Yeah, so we're supposed to glory in the fact that we know the Lord, man. All right, and ultimately, what does it mean to know the Lord? First John chapter two and verse four, uh, three. Hereby we know we hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that says. To lock you all right satan you know says uh bear with me that's how you know that was satan bad like <laughs> oh so like i didn't even mean to do that so like yeah but yeah that's how you know it was satan yeah, yeah see Satan, man. Satan. Anyways, all right, it says, Hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, keep him not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of the most high perfected. Hereby we know that we are in him. So that's the point of that right there. You know, we know we know Yahweh Shemel Shai when we keep his commandments, when we keep his ways. Okay? That's why the scripture says, If you love me, keep my commandments. All right? So part of keeping the Lord's ways is is walking with humility, man. And that is something that the Lord marvels at, you know. Sirach or Ecclesiastes 2, starting at verse 15. They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word, and they that love him will keep his ways. That's the spirit. Verse 16. They that fear the Lord will seek that which is well-pleasing unto him, and they that love him shall be filled with the law. All right? And that which is well-pleasing unto him is remaining humble you know that's that's well pleasing unto the lord humility is well pleasing unto the lord all right it says they that fear the lord will prepare their hearts and humble their souls in his sight okay so that's the point of that right there they that fear the lord will prepare their hearts meaning you're going to prepare your mind to seek the lord all right it says and humble their souls in his sight and that's what we've been doing when we came into this faith man we humbled ourselves man and we have to remain humble because scripture do say knowledge puffeth up, you know, so just because we're growing in the knowledge, don't give us an excuse to become more prideful. Matter of fact, it's the opposite. This is Sirach or Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 17. My son, go on with, that, with thy business in meekness. So shall thou be beloved of him that is approved. The greater thou art, the more humble thyself and thou shalt find favor before the Lord. Many are in a high place and of renown, but mysteries are revealed unto the meek. For the power of the Lord is great, and he is honored of the lowly, man. All right, so you want to honor the Lord? Be Remain humble. Remain lowly. Okay? This is Sirach or Ecclesiasticus 18 and 21. It says, actually, I'll start at 20. Before judgment, examine thyself. And in the day of visitation, thou shalt find mercy. 21. Humble thyself before thou be sick. And in times of repentance, she repent. Uh, it's like in the times of sin, she repentance. Yes, yeah, so we have to humble ourselves, man, before the Lord judges us. You know, so also we remain humble. You know, if you remain humble, the Lord will deal with you, man, and the Lord and the Lord is pleased with that. Okay, let me get this scripture real quick. Yeah. 
Let me get that scripture, Lord willing. This is the second Ezra 8 and verse 48. It says, In this also thou art marvelous before the Most High, in that thou hast humbled thyself as it becometh thee, and has not judged thyself worthy to be much glorified among the righteous. You know? So, Ezra was a very humble man, and it said that he was marvelous before the Most High because of his humility, man. You know? So, if we want to be marvelous before Yahweh Shemashai, we have to be humble too. You know, speaking to myself first and foremost, of course. This is Sirach or Ecclesiasticus 7 and verse 17. Humble thyself greatly for the vengeance of the Lord. It's like for the vengeance of the ungodly is fire and worms. Yeah. The missile fires, man. Okay. So you don't want to be a part of that. No, I don't want to be a part of that. So we have to humble ourselves greatly, man. All right. And then I got this last precept, Lord willing, and I could close out with this because the point has really been made. You know, it's James 4 and verse 10. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Right. So that's why Yahweh I said he that exalts himself. All right. Let me get that real quick. All right, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up, man. Now you lift yourself up and the Lord have to take you down. All right. Is Luke, um, Matthew 23 and 12, whosoever and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that exalt and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. That's right, okay. You always want to take the low first, man. All right, now let me get this scripture because I like to read this, um, uh, parable right here because it shows you a lot, man. Luke 14 and 7, and you put forth a parable to those which were bidden. When he marked how they chose up the chief rooms, saying unto them, When thou art bidden of any man to a wedding, sit not down in the highest room. And this wedding represents the kingdom of heaven. You know, ultimately, there's knowledge first and foremost, because the scriptures say wisdom bringeth to a kingdom. So this knowledge represents that wedding through the kingdom of heaven. Okay. And Yahweh Shai is being married to his bride, the nation of Israel, beginning with the elect. So when you're coming into this truth, you know, take the low route, understand, you know, you know, you're young in the faith, you know, you don't know everything, you know, be humble, man. Don't try to take the chief seat and the scriptures say, seek not of the Lord preeminence. You know, you shouldn't be wanting to be the top guy in Israel. You know, that shouldn't want to be your goals and aspirations, at least not through strife and vain glory. You know, because a lot of times when you say, oh, I want to be the best, I want to be the top. It's really out of strife and vain glory, you know. But if you sincerely want to be the best that you can be, there's nothing wrong with that. But when you're trying to be, you know, something, you know, for strife and vain glory, that's when it's a problem. All right. This is Luke 14 and 8 it says when thou art bidden of a man, any man to a wedding, sit down in the highest. And another thing, too, is another thing about order or humility is order, you know, understanding that, OK, I'm not the highest ranking brother in the camp, you know, or I'm not even the highest ranking brother, you know within israel if you will if you know what i'm saying like just order you know order okay mainly it, it applies to a camp you know because there's a lot of brothers who are in the truth you know and who have knowledge but nonetheless mainly it applies to a camp okay i'm not the highest ranking brother in the camp i'm the youngest brother in the camp or you know youngest in the faith whatever the case might be you just understand your order in the, in the camp and that also has a role in humility too because here it is you trying to tell the camp head what to do you trying to uh use up authority over the camp head you know so on and so forth that's really out of order and that's not humble okay have also being humble is knowing your place man knowing who you are knowing your position nonetheless when thou art bidden of any man to a wedding sit not down in the highest room let's say a more honorable man than thee be be thou bidden of him and he that bade thee and him come and say to thee give this man place and thou begin to sh begin with shame to take the lowest room yeah but when thou art bidden go and sit down in the lowest room that when he that bade thee cometh say he may say unto thee friend go up higher then shall thou have worship in the presence of them that sit at meat with thee. For whosoever exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbles himself shall be exalted. Call Allahim la yahab bashim ashai bashim akakudash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of the great Muslim. Every well, peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom and a Baba Ball.